Hello, this is Valerie Ayalo, and you're listening to Idea Diary. Thanks for coming back to my office and hanging out. All right, today I wanted to go over this one thing that I heard about. I don't know if he was like exactly just a founder or a real CEO, but this guy named Justin Kahn, he was one of the creators of Twitch. And I guess he might have been the CEO of Twitch. I was just kind of watching a little bit of an interview on um, Silicon Valley Girls channel. So I didn't really watch the whole thing. But she was asking him some certain questions about, um, you know, what it, what does his day kind of look like? And he spends about four hours on the telephone, having meetings, different things. And he spends two hours a day on content. And I found that really interesting because although I'm not really focusing on social media at all anymore, not at all in the way that I used to think of it as being really important, social media is super on the back burner for me. Content is on the front burner, I guess you could say. I'm kind of considering content different than just social media because I feel like with social media, you're maybe trying to show off yourself, but also you're trying to sell something. And when I think about content, it's not really about selling something. It's really about creating a moment to hang out with other like-minded people. You may have products also. That's not really the point of creating content. Content is more about enjoying yourself with the internet in some way and doing it in a way that you feel comfortable, that you feel like you're good at. I'm not comfortable or good at podcasting, but It's kind of an easy choice for me to do. I really want to combine podcasting with video making and blog writing, but writing's really my weakest skill of all my skills that I've got. So I'm focusing on the daily podcast, which is not as hard as you think it is once you get started. It's pretty easy, even though some things can knock you off course like weather, just holidays or you know, moving. There's a lot of things that can knock you off course, but you can always come back. And that's why I like the daily show idea. Because really, if I get knocked off a day or two, when when I come back, I can always start tomorrow fresh and new and just keep going forward. I don't really have to think about things so much. So having a daily show might seem very overwhelming, but it's actually really comforting. And I'm only trying to promise myself some where between five and 15 minute show. If I go over, I go over. I haven't gotten in a situation to where I I can't do more than five minutes. Five minutes seems very easy and doable. I feel like for anybody in the whole world could accomplish a podcast daily, just committing to five minutes. But I really like the idea that this high level, very successful CEO, angel investor, or whatever kind of investor he wants to call himself, Um, Just this high profile, high achieving, high just genius of a guy. If he's at the level that he's at and he's still focusing on two hours a day of content, I really feel like that's something that it's, it's really valuable in some way and I'm kind of on the right track in the, my thought process and kind of dumping all the wasted energy and time into social media and really focusing on content and letting that social media kind of fall into place later after I've built something worth following. I think that's where I know I've kind of fallen into the trap of trying to build socials to build companies. And yeah, I always cared about finding like-minded people and being entertaining. I really wasn't focusing on the value of the content I was creating. I was just kind of doing what I had time for and what was easy then. And I guess at the time, I thought it was a whole lot of work. But at, but if I think about it now, it really was a lot of busy work and minimal effort where if I would have shifted on what was important to me or what is actually important when it comes to social, which I can say... There's probably more things that are important that I'm not realizing just yet. But when it comes to social, it's not really about sales so much as it's about showing off who you are and and what you can bring to a table, a virtual table of 
and being enjoyable to be around. What are you going to bring to the conversation? You know, if this was a dinner party, what are you going to talk about? What value can you bring to the person on the other side of the table? And that's really hard. I think when you're doing something like this, where it's a one-sided conversation, and that's a whole other skill level on its own. I'm kind of imagining that this is a conversation that the other half hasn't happened yet. And I'm just trying to build my skills, my podcasting skills, and my speaking skills. And my and I'm I know I'm a very confusing person in general. So just kind of getting across my thoughts and ideas in this one way conversation format. And then Maybe I can bring in actual interviews or actual conversations. And then when it's, I know that people actually want to talk with me at the same time as it's happening, then I can possibly bring in the live element. I'm not sure what's the best thing or what's actually going to happen. I'm kind of just seeing where the road takes me. I know that doing this, you know, if I'm, if I'm thinking about how long does content take me a day, I would say about two hours of shuffling around with about one hour of that being actual work. I've never really rushed for any reason. And, you know, so when I have like an entire day to do whatever I want to do or whatever I need to do. Yeah, sometimes I have errands or things that I need to get done or things that are distracting. And I might have to do a show really fast or something or do a show the night before to post the next day. I, you know, I try to plan ahead as much as possible or sometimes I just can't get to the show and it and it's just not going to happen and I just have to move it to the next day. Overall, I would say I'm at about two hours a day of, you know, kind of thinking and creating content. One hour a day, I guess if I would try to rush myself and get it done faster. And I do want to add that three hours a day of doing an original illustration a day that would go along with a short blog post of some kind that would take me hopefully about two or three hours to wrap up everything, the podcast, illustration, and a blog. I feel like once I really get into that rhythm and accomplishing that goal that I have, I I do feel like my skills are going to really exponentially get better at some point. Right now, it just kind of sucks, but there's going to be that moment where I just feel like, all right, I'm not embarrassed. This isn't that bad. And I can produce a higher quality show, written stuff, just kind of in general, everything, you know, whatever's on my plate, whatever's interesting to me. And I feel like that's pretty good. Another thing he was talking about was that he doesn't want to be a CEO ever again. And I kind of relate to that being a creative, you know, art department type of person. When it comes to a company kind of layout of all the people that, you know, the employees of what it takes to make whatever it is that your company does. I would fall into the art department, a little bit into sales and marketing, I guess, um, product development in general kind of person. And I don't really want to be in charge of everything. I want somebody else that's really good at that to take over that. What I really want to be is a CCO, which has different names, but I consider a CCO to be chief creative officer. And I don't need a title at all. That titles are basically just made up. Just the idea of if I'm in control of anything, it would be the overall creativity of the company and productivity level and happiness, I guess, in what can be achieved. And right now I do everything myself, but if I did get to that level of some kind where I could sell a company but still be involved in some way, just the overall creativity and the branding overall of what's happening behind the scenes and what's happening for the customer, that's kind of my thing. You know, like when Sophia Amorosu had Nasty Gal and she became the CFO or she became the CEO or she was the CEO and then, you know, just turned and snowballed into this huge thing to where she ended up replacing herself as the CEO and then the whole company fell apart. And it just seems like, and y'all can look into her story, but she might have, she 
grew too fast. You know, these are things that she says. Um, it just was overwhelming. And then she got into things that maybe weren't the best idea at the time. So everything's different for all kinds of people. Like, there's not one answer. And sometimes you got to go through these really bad things and big, huge failures to get to the even bigger level. So if you fail, you just got to get up and keep going and trying again. And being successful doesn't mean you have to wake up at 5 a.m. and work 20 hour days and sleep four hours a day and all the things that people kind of think, you know, sometimes you can just be, sometimes you can just build at the speed that you are able to, to build. And for some people that's part-time, for some people that's full-time, for some people that's 20 hours a day for 20 years, and then they finally get their success. You know, it's just so different for so many people. All right, so you can hear the song of the day, which I have posted on my TikTok. And it's a Benny Goodman song, and it was not on this album, but I was listening to this album this morning. And the song is Whispering in the Night. I can't remember off the top of my head, and my phone's way over there. But if you go to my TikTok, and you can see my morning montage, my morning coffee montage, with my morning ritual. Yeah, that's over there. So that's the whole show, and thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you later.